A lot more on this story now. The New York Times, what many consider to be the world's best newspaper, has published an opinion piece amid this Rob Ford crack cocaine scandal that is rocking the city of Toronto. The title is blunt. It is called Toronto's Hot Mess. It was written by Canadian novelist Stephen Marsh, who is also a contributing editor to Esquire magazine, tries to explain to New York Times readers worldwide what is going on with Rob Ford and how Toronto itself is changing as a result. And Stephen Marsh joins us now from downtown Toronto. Stephen, great to have you on the show. What do you make of this scandal? Well, uh, I mean, I think most of what I make of the scandal is in the piece about how Toronto is sort of growing and the stakes are becoming larger and larger, and we've become a city making a spectacle of itself. Um, but today, I think things are just getting weirder and weirder. I mean, just the normalcy with which the mayor went to the office today, just it's becoming surreal. Like, it, it really is becoming like a Star Trek episode. You know, like, on this planet, the mayors do crack. Like, that, that's sort of the room we're in now, and I think nobody really understands what's, what's happening. You know, you know Toronto very well. You know Canada yeah. very well, of course. Is there something about us that makes us uh, uh, permissive of this sort of thing? Well, I think there is definitely the worship of privacy here. Like, this is a, an inheritance we have from the British Empire. Let, you know, if you, uh, what you do in the privacy of your own home is really your business and that you should be left alone to do it. However, I mean, I think, you know, this is an argument that the Fords make. But on the other hand, like, they've shown that they're lying and they're, they have no honor and they have no believability anymore. And those are all things that you need in a chief magistrate of a major city. What made you uh, decide to write this op-ed? Well, they, they called me. They wanted me to explain Toronto to them, really. Um, and, you know, I, I find the appetite for this story is just immense. I've, I've, not, I've watched this story like everybody else, just with total bewilderment. Um, and trying to figure it out, I think, is going to take us a long time. Like, clearly the city that we all thought we lived in uh, is changing. And, and what, how it's going to end up is really anybody's guess. Uh, Stephen, there are two quotes that we want to show uh, to our viewers who might not have had the opportunity to read the full piece. This is the first one. You say his mayoralty has been an experiment in what would happen if you had a feral 16-year-old boy uh, for a mayor. Uh, tell me about that description. Well, isn't that... I mean, subsequent events have proved that one true. I mean, when his mother was, was talking to uh, CP24, it was just sort of like, you realize that this is a 44-year-old man, not a 16-year-old boy. Like, this is not going to, suddenly he's going to change this, he's going to grow out of this phase and then everything's going to be okay. Like, the, the way that he acts is, is, like a, is exactly like a feral 16-year-old boy. I mean, going into the woods to get hammered. I, I don't know, like, I, if, you, if you have power, surely there are other places for you to get hammered, rather than the woods, say. You also talk about uh, the city of Toronto itself, and I want to bring up the second quote board yeah. here from your piece. You say, Toronto the bland is going if it isn't already gone. Toronto yeah. is a city of Rob Ford now, an expanding hot mess, and you go on to say overcoming nearly 200 years of sensible decisions, Toronto is starting to get interesting. Yeah. What do you mean by that? Well, I mean, when was the last time you, a, a Toronto story was on the cover of German papers, Japanese papers? We're starting to become interesting. We, we're also starting to become kind of incomprehensible. I mean, I don't think anyone really understands what's going on here. Uh, I, don't, I, I don't think it, the, the, the case for, of a mayor caught smoking crack, lied about it, covered it up, admitted to it, just keeps going. That is new. That is new in the world. We have introduced that to history. Um, and I think, I think it's, uh, it's fascinating. Like, whatever else you may say about it, it is fascinating. Uh, and, and so that, that's really the position we find ourselves in. It's interesting you raise that point uh, because, you know, there is this idea that there's no such thing as bad publicity. And you wonder whether <laughs> it, it hurts Toronto's image or, on the other hand, it gets us in the headlines, New York Times, The Economist. I mean, my, my father lives in Europe and he said, hey, we made The Economist again. Canada made The Economist over Rob Ford. I mean, you wonder sort of uh, the sort of the positives and the negatives of this story. But, you know, I, I think the whole point of the Rob Ford thing is we don't have to ask ourselves these questions anymore. Like, we don't have to ask ourselves, like, does the world care about us? It's like, yeah, they care. <laughs> and uh, what's happening here is actually more important than that. Like, we have to care about it because what is happening is something that, um, you know, it's not like, is this an interesting story? It's like, what is happening? Uh, so that, that, I think, is actually a sign of growing up. Like, we don't, we don't need to care what other people think about, it, uh, about us. We're just so weird that... Um, that we're fascinating in our own right. 
Stephen Marsh is a novelist and contributing editor to Esquire magazine. His opinion piece appeared this week in the New York Times. Toronto's Hot Mess was the title. Thanks so much for your time, Stephen. Pleasure.